So, sunshine, what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to get this cylinder, we're going to get this aftermarket Chinesium cylinder put on this, fired up, I hope, fired up, run it, get a test cut or two, get a dyno cut or two, or dyno run or two, we'll bounce that against the uh, stock dyno runs. I want to get a, an idea for anybody that just wants to switch these cylinders out go to the aftermarket kit or if they had a wore out when it was straight gassed or whatever see if you can expect any gains uh, just going to an aftermarket cylinder I'm going to go out on a limb here no I haven't put it together or anything but I'm going to go out on a limb and speculate that this aftermarket cylinder and I'll try to give it a little bit of time to even break in a little bit at least a uh, tolerable amount of time I speculate this aftermarket cylinder this bigger is going to produce less power than this one. So let's see what we got. I'm going to go ahead and put it together with a base gasket. I know it doesn't need it. <clears throat> It'll time fine without it. But I want to put it together and then we're going to have a base run for all and the rest of that nasty stuff we're going to do inside this one anyway. Uh, putting this together just like it come out of the box and somebody was rebuilding a saw and didn't own nothing but a T27 uh that's what we're going to do today so, and they're actually different so that top cover may not fit just right this stud here is different it's recessed down into this boss this one here was too it was recessed down into this boss a little bit that had a shoulder a little bit of a shoulder on it to keep it from screwing all the way down this one's got a big flat spot on it that sets down the recess the aftermarket one's not that that away so i'll probably end up just taking a bolt and making a stud for that one because this one isn't going to work. I rebuilt a saw and about half of my brain's hoping it lasts a good long time. And about the other half, the evil half, is hoping it breaks down again so I get to rebuild it again. That's like my steel 310. That thing's been going four or five years and that was the first one of that chassis I'd rebuilt and I wish it'd break down because I've got a lot of different stuff I've learned since then uh, to do to it and <laughs> I want to do it but right now it runs so good that's my go-to saw okay we're oh Roxy <laughs> oh baby girl help me huh? help. we gotta put this little clip in there okay we gotta put this little clip in there yeah it won't run very long without it no gonna help you probably got better eyes than I do. You gonna help me find it? Hmm? <laughs> yeah, we always make time for you, won't we? We ain't no hurry. Uh -uh. We ain't no hurry. You're cold, ain't you? Your little feet's is cold, ain't you? You've been out playing out in the wet. Oh, uh, I think we can get cylinder put down on it. Those rings oriented correctly. At least close enough to it, they'll. Now this doodad here can do his job. Squeeze it down. You can do them by hand, I guess. Uh, I kind of like these big old fat fingers of mine. Okay, how about all that do that? How you guys like getting stuck in a group text? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to worry about putting the top cover on it right now. We're going to see if this thing will fire here in just a second as soon as I get the air, air cleaner on it. Like I say, you about got to put it on there because that's where the choke's at. This saw never has been an easy starter. Six, eight, ten pulls from cold before it ever hit.
run. We don't have clutch or top covers or nothing on it. But it looks like it will run. Oh, heck, I guess it runs it off. That's why it died. We'll get some dyno runs and test runs, and that'll make a uh, show you guys the charts on them. Show you probably a side by side comparison. I'll pull up an old test run. I hope I haven't deleted them yet. Getting a heat cycler through to it. Starting to get a little bit of compression, not too bad. Starts easy though. Oh! Take two. Starts easy though. Stilo 26 stock cylinder, uh, no mods other than the muffler mod. Team 580. fish. That quit squirming around like a 170. Let me fix that tooth. It only hurt for a minute. aftermarket big bore with the muffler mod. We'd already done the muffler mod so we can't put the toothpaste back in the tube on that. 44.7 millimeter bore uh, was put on the saw just like it would have come out of the package to give you an indication of what you can expect. Now, I will tell you it's got a pretty big squish. Uh, stock squish on this saw was 30 thousandths. I timed the aftermarket bore without a base gasket it was 30 thousandths. In the interest of trying to duplicate or replicate what you could expect out of the box I went ahead and used a base gasket on it so the squish squish be pretty big. Uh, the saw was dismal at best. Uh, this was this was after just a few heat cycles probably a tank of fuel. Uh, I went ahead and put it on dyno uh, the highest RPM I could get out of it was 11219. The way my dyno is, it's, it's got a static. Uh, it takes about, about a foot pound and a half to spin it up, depending on temperature oil, to get it spun all the way up. This, uh, this aftermarket cylinder, while it would free rev with a chain on past 13,000 on the dyno, it didn't have any torque to get past the uh, about 11, 11 two. Uh, it was just that week. 
uh, horsepower, corrected horsepower was 2.53 horsepower at 9,043 uh, RPMs. Foot pound was 2.41 max at 5703, which is terribly, terribly disappointing to me. Um, then after I run that for about two tanks, we, we jumped up a little bit. We gained a little bit of horsepower over where we was at, so it was starting to break in. Uh, one could assume this saw will still continue to get stronger. As we was at 2.65 horse after a couple tanks, 2.53 before a couple tanks. So in two tanks of gas, we gained a tenth of a horsepower. And the reason I say this is dismal at best, the original stock 44 millimeter, so smaller, uh, smaller by about three cc's if I remember right. Uh, the blue line is the big bore with a muffler mod uh, after just after uh, a few heat cycles. Uh, the red line, you can see it climbed a little. Uh, the red line was after two more tanks of fuel and some cutting. Uh, I cut about two more tanks of fuel on it. The green line, that was stock. You can tell how much we've lowered from what this saw run stock. This cylinder, the intake timing numbers are terrible on it. The squish, using the base gasket, is going to be terrible. So all in all, if you have a 44 millimeter stroke or 44 millimeter bore 026 and think I'm going to go to the big bore and just swap it out, I believe you'll be strongly disappointed, at least on the brand I bought. If you was expecting more horsepower, I would leave your stock cylinder on there if there's nothing wrong with it. Because we went from 3.7 to after a couple tanks 2.65 but let's say we lost we lost a full horsepower uh, 36 to 29 yeah we lost over a third we lost over a third of the horsepower we lost a third of our horsepower by going to the big bore uh, we might get some of that back if we left the base gasket out but we didn't and we're going to we're going to do we're going to start working this saw up and fix the problems that come out of the factory so stick around and we'll have some more appreciate you guys being here if i earned it give it a like if i didn't uh don't if you really hate it let me know what i can do different to change what i'm doing uh, so appreciate it guys being around i hope you all have a good uh good new year's